So I think one of the characters we know least of is is Kasima and the fact that, that whenever we saw her this past second season, she was always kind of dealing with her sickness and kind of trying to work that around. She wasn't really involved in the drama of the dyad necessarily firsthand. And so this season will we get to see her more involved in the Leda vs vs Castor drama or will she off will she be on her side again just kind of working out the science? Well um you know, it's it's really Sarah is the one who charges forward and takes on all comers. Allison, you know, um, Allison uh, deals with her, her world and dips in to help when she can. Um, at one th- and and Kasima, I mean, she handles the science, and the science is their science. The science is a threat to them. The science is a threat to herself as well. So it's an intensely personal story for Kasima. Um, one thing I one thing I like about that sisterhood is they let Allison be Allison. Part of their victory, part of their victory of the sisterhood is to give each other their own space to do what they want to do. Um, Kasima in particular, I think if we give Kasima space to do anything this year, it's to relax a little bit. It's uh, to have some fun with Felix um, and um, and maybe uh, Certainly, in the maybe in the beginning of part of the season, is to, is to take a step back a little bit from the sun. And she gets to hang out with Scott a lot. Scott's Scott's got a good season. Scott is awesome. Yeah, we like Scott. We like Scott. He 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 earned himself more screen time. This year. We even meet his cat. Oh. <laughs> Can you talk about the evolution of Delphine? Because um, I've only seen the first episode back, and she's um, you can already tell um, with her taking the lead, she's a different person almost. Not, I mean, just kind of a little more hardcore. She she made a, a promise to Kasima at the end of last season that she would uh, um, love all the sisters equally, and I think that she is. She's in in this. She's had had to take on this terrible position, this terrible burden, of more responsibility, and more power, and um, and keep that promise. So um, you know, there's going to be some casualties to that, uh, to keeping those promises along the way. It's some of the really really interesting storyline for Delphine this year, um, and you know. Shippers don't despair. <laughs> Do you have a process that you've been through as far as all these different clones? Because now you have, you know, you already had all these female clones, and now you have all these male clones that are coming into it. Is there a process for keeping them all so different, making sure none of them are really sort of mirrors of each other? Um, the, the male clones are, are different than Project Caster is just different than Project Leda because Project Leda has been raised and they are separate. They didn't know about each other, and they, uh, you know, uh, they've really been raised in, in different nurture environments to see that impact on their on their nature. Whereas the boys were, were raised together, they're aware of their brothers. They're aware. Uh, uh, that they're clones from the very beginning, so in fact, there's there's less of this wild differentiation, this um, uh, determined sort of individuality of the clones um, with the boys than than with the girls. It's a it's a it's a challenge for Ari because they're you know they're raised together and and so in, they're, they're they're really not similar. The, the differences in them are, are more subtle. Yeah. Are we going to see any more female clones this year? We like our clones. <laughs> okay. um, I think we can just say yes. Okay. Just um, the process, like picking what type, what new kind of trope or character or experience to introduce into the story. How do you feel about that? Um, well, it's... I mean, it begins with what we think the story might need, and once we have a grasp on what the story might need, we talk to Tat about um, about what uh, um, 
what what character what character is she interested in doing? She'll come to us with ideas of characters too. That's happened in the second season. In the, in the third season, uh, it was quite collaborative, um, and uh, it's always it's really part of our process now. Is, is to we don't want to overdo that, and we can't overdo it. We can't just constantly introduce new clones. It's not clone of the week. Um, so there is a, a really or, organic process of giving Tat lots of room to when a new a new character is coming for her and um, to to discover it for all of us and then you know um, keep her involved as it's going onto the page so that she's giving feedback because she's pretty darn good at that. Might we see Tony Sawicki again? Uh, it's a long game. Tony will Tony will come back definitely in, at some point. Um, I think I think Tony's kind of out like Jack Kerouacking around the, the country, and sooner or later Tony's going to come back into the fold. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about Paul's arc this season? Um, you know, like Delphine, he's a complex character whose allegiances are really torn, and um, he's got a great, uh, I will say that, 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 that Dylan Bruce has a really great um, storyline this season, and we may just get to know who Paul really is. When did you decide he was going to be, you know, a double operative? Was that was something that you and John had figured out relatively early, or was that something that you needed more towards the end of the season? Um, yeah, it it was more towards the end of the season, um, but it felt organic with the sh with Orphan Black that the sh the sands are shifting and that and that uh, um, uh, that characters reveal themselves to be different than what you thought. Um, but it was you know it was about. Sort of leading up to the to, a, to the great climax, to a really good climax, and and who turns and who surprises, and we really liked this. We really liked it. It was an earlier episode. Maybe it was eight. It might have even been earlier when Paul and Mrs. S met for the only the second time, and we we were like, oh, and there's a lot of stuff there. Like, it's mysterious. Uh, it's mysterious enough that we could pull from that and and, and, sit and have some revelations from that. And I mean, at the same time, this show has so greatly evolved now, to now from what it was when it started. How, how much of that was really all part of the bigger plan? How much of that really came from just watching what these characters did together? It's a real mix. Um, we always had a pretty good idea of the shape of the whole series, the end point, um, and some of these major things along the way we knew that in the first season we knew that from going into the first season we knew that um, Helena was Sarah's twin sister we knew that twist um, in the second season we knew we wanted to get to to revealing male clones but for instance we didn't know who that was going to be so we keep loose enough to uh, steer the story in directions that we discover, but within that we have a, you know, a general structure and some big general things that we want to have happen along the way. Some of them are plot, and some of them are pure character, pure character moments like Allison and Donnie. You know, Donnie kills Doctor Leakey. That was a, we didn't know that was going to happen. That was a, that was a, uh, looking for a shocking discovery. And well, if someone's going to kill Doctor Leakey. Who is it? Who won't you see coming? Uh, and it was a great moment. And again, was, yeah, again, that was like, you know, I was like, I think it should, I think Donnie should do it. And John and so the other writers were like, that's stupid, you know. But slowly we worked our way around to, you know, maybe because you don't see it coming. So. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.